Hey what's up guys, my name is Frosty Infernape, and today we're going to be starting a new series called A Look Back. Now I thought this would be an interesting series where we take a look back at each Pokemon game released and talk about them. I'll be talking about stuff like the history of the games, the impact they had on Pokemon, and much more about the games. So on the first episode of this, we're going to be looking at the original Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy. Now I'm sure a lot of you know where the idea from Pokemon came from. Satoshi Tajiri, the person who created Pokemon, was really into catching insects as a kid and wanted to make a video game about them. So he finally brought his idea to life and made Pokemon with Game Freak. Something interesting about Game Freak when they were making the original Pokemon games is that they almost went bankrupt, but they pushed through and made Pokemon games, and now they're one of the top video game companies. Thankfully for all of us, including Game Freak, they didn't go bankrupt and were able to finish up Pokemon Red and Blue, and they became an instant hit and saved the company. Pokemon Red and Blue were released in 1996 and were an instant hit, and like I said, they saved Game Freak as a company. Pokemon Red and Blue were so popular, in fact, it led to the eventual creation of the anime and trading card game. Something interesting you might not know about the original Pokemon games, or you might know, I've seen a lot of people talk about it, is the fact that the original concept for Pokemon was you'd be fighting Pokemon. So you, if you've played the games and you've seen some sprites of trainers with whips, that's what they were for, to fight Pokemon. It's interesting how that was the original concept for the game, considering the game was based off of Satoshi Tajiri catching insects or catching Pokemon, but the original concept for the game was fighting them. I'm sure Pokemon would be a lot different today if the original concept for Red and Blue, which was fighting Pokemon, was in Pokemon today. It might not even be around today. I mean, the series motto is, gotta catch them all. Like, just think of how different Pokemon would be. I'm sorry for repeating myself, but it's just crazy to think about how, if there wasn't a very late change into the game, it'd be so different. Pokemon Red and Blue are some of the best-selling games of all time. They sold over 47 million copies worldwide. Now let's talk about the gameplay of Pokemon Red and Blue. And the gameplay is incredibly simple when you get down to it. The object of the game is to fight your way through 8 gyms and beat the Elite Four in Champion. Or really just Elite Four because there is no actual champion in this. But you basically go through the 8 gyms, fight the Elite Four, and become the champion. Along the way, you'll encounter these pocket monsters or Pokemon battle other trainers, and fight the evil team. At the beginning of the game, you're given a starter Pokemon. Depending on who you choose, you get the Water-type Squirtle, Fire-type Charmander, or Grass-type Bulbasaur. Pokemon also had a really cool mechanic of the type mechanic. Each type would have certain advantages and disadvantages. Throughout your journey with your starter Pokemon, you'll encounter almost 150 other Pokemon of all different types. You can battle these Pokemon and gain experience, or you could catch them and have them join your team. If you catch all of them, you'll have completed the Pokedex, which doesn't really give you a reward, it's just saying, hey, you've caught all the Pokemon, good job. Aside from catching Pokemon, you also battle with them against other trainers or gyms. You encounter trainers throughout different routes, and you can battle them and gain experience. With all the experience you gain, your Pokemon will level up and be strong enough to fight the different gyms, there are eight different gyms in the Pokemon games, and each of them is a different type. The gyms are basically mini-bosses, and when you fight them, you progress into the game. You get a gym badge for defeating each gym, and once you collect all eight gym badges, you can go fight the Elite Four. Aside from this main story of fighting the gyms and fighting the Elite Four, you know, the basic Pokemon story, there's also an evil team, Team Rocket. Team Rocket is the first ever evil team ever introduced into Pokemon, and they're the most basic evil team you can get. They just steal Pokemon, because they're an evil team. You'll encounter Team Rocket throughout the game, and you'll fight them and stop them. It's pretty basic when you get down to it, but hey, at least it's something else, something to keep you interested. Towards the end of the game, you find out that the leader of the evil team, Giovanni, is actually a gym leader in Viridian City. Now, aside from battling the gyms, battling the Elite Four, battling trainers, catching all the Pokemon, beating Team Rocket, the only other really thing to do is probably the Safari Zone, which is more of the catching Pokemon stuff, but it's really the only, I guess, 
attraction in the region, if that makes sense. The Safari Zone is a catching minigame, pretty much. Home to Pokemon you can't usually get, like Chansey. And you have 30 Pokeballs, or Safari Balls, and try to catch these Pokemon. It's just another add-on to the catching mechanic, but I think in Kanto, where there's not a whole lot to do besides the main story, it's nice to have some other minigame in the region, I guess. And besides all that, there's not much to do in the game, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. No, far from it. It's an incredibly fun game, or games. And Pokemon Red and Blue, the first games of the Pokemon series, really emphasized fun and basic gameplay. These games aren't difficult by any means, but there are some really annoying things in them. Like HMs. HMs, oh, I hate HMs so much. Thank God Generation 7 got rid of them. HMs are basically a lame way of limiting progression until you've done certain things. Like, you might have gotten stuck in Vermilion City if you didn't know you had to go in the SSN and fight your way through it to get the cut HM. It's also something Pokemon didn't do very well. There wasn't much of a tutorial in it. I mean, nowadays we don't we get annoyed with Pokemon tutorials, but that but back then when it was new, a tutorial would have been nice. But games in that era just didn't really have tutorials. And that's pretty much a basic overview of the gameplay of Pokemon Red and Blue. Again, it's fun and basic gameplay. So for the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about the impact of the very first Pokemon games. So, many people consider these the worst Pokemon games, and I don't think they're that great of Pokemon games, but they were the first games, so they're great in that respect, and without these games, there would be no Pokemon. Yeah, I might get a lot of hate for saying that these games aren't great. I mean, they're great games, but compared to other Pokemon games, they're not that great. But these still are great games. Sorry for repeating that, I had to make myself clear so I wouldn't get dislike mobbed. But like I said, Pokemon wouldn't be where it's at now without these games, so in that respect, these games are legendary. These games also started the whole Pokemania craze, where Pokemon basically took over the world in the late 90s. Now, I wasn't alive back then, but I do know um, from watching YouTube and online and all that stuff, Pokemon was the, the biggest thing back then. It was absolutely massive. Everybody was talking about Pokemon. Now with its popularity, it also inspired the anime and TCG, which I talked about earlier. Pokemon also popularized the genre of turn-based fighting games, which also I think Pokemon is really the only successful franchise in turn-based fighting games, but there have been a few others that have been pretty good. These games also marked the beginning for one of the best franchises and best-selling franchises in history. It might actually be the best, I'm not 100% sure though, but I know it's one of the top grossing media franchises. Not to mention, Pokemon is a giant part of Nintendo. They make billions of dollars from Pokemon a year. From toy sales, from trading card sales, from game sales. People even buy Nintendo consoles just for Pokemon. I mean, that's really why I wanted a 3DS, and after I was out of Pokemon and didn't care about my 3DS anymore, that's when I bought two other 3DSs, actually, to play Pokemon. I also bought my Nintendo Switch because I knew Pokemon was coming to those. And because of Red and Blue, you know, I've said before, Pokemon is obviously where it is now, and Pokemon is a big, was a big part of my childhood, and still is a big part of my life right now. Obviously, my YouTube channel is Pokemon, and so I think Pokemon, I really have to thank Pokemon Red and Blue for that, because without them, who knows where I'd be now. I mean, I'd probably have another YouTube channel with only 8 subscribers, but I have this YouTube channel with only 8 subscribers. Also, if you're new, you should subscribe for more Pokemon content. And that's going to be it for the video. Thanks for listening to me blab about Pokemon Red and Blue for 9 minutes. If you're new, you should subscribe, and if you like this video, leave a like, and hopefully we'll continue this A Look Back series next time with Pokemon Yellow. But again, if you're new, subscribe for more Pokemon content. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next video.